Warning, if you start making fountains and you're putting out feeders for the hummingbirds, you're going to end up with thousands because water fountains bring them in and so does the food. And you know how I make all kinds of fountains for them. Well, let me tell you, one of their favorite ones are the ball fountains and they cost a lot of money. Look how many are attracted to it. But I'm going to show you here how we can make it for pennies. Yes, pennies. It is just so easy and fun to make. And this is a cement ball. You would think, wait, that's too hard to make. I have been making them for years. And once you get your pattern together, which is taking nothing, just the ball, you can make a whole bunch, even for your friends. All you'll need is a solar fountain kit, a bucket of your choice. You can decorate them like I did this one. And yes, the Orioles and all the birds come in for them because they all love them. It feels natural. It's like landing on a rock because they can grip on it. Let's get right into how I make these bowls so you can get started today too. So this is how I make my balls for my fountains and I've made quite a few. This is a rubber ball that Gary once found in the street and it's about 15 inches in circumference. So you'll need an opening if you're going to sit it in there that's no more than about four and a half inches but you'll get it as we put it together. Now what I do because I've used it multiple times is I duct tape it back but it will collapse on itself so I put a balloon in there and I blow it up and then when I get ready to do my cement, I pop the balloon and I take it out. That keeps its form. Otherwise, I, if I tape it, it collapses. Remember, it's just a soft rubber ball. Now, if you were making a fountain right now and you were going to use a straw, I would drop a straw in. When I made this one, I used a papaya branch, which worked out fantastic. So you could use any type of stick, but you'd want it to be plastic because you want to be able to slide it out. And a papaya branch off the leaf is very slick, like using a plastic straw. I would do it that way though now with a plastic straw. Now I just take plain old ready cement, you know, that's all you need is water, pre-mixed, but I strain out most of the big rocks. You could do it any way you want. You can make your own, you know, the formula, sand and cement, but I do it this way. So I just buy it a bag. They're so cheap. They're under $5 for 60 pounds. And then I just sift the rocks out and then I stir it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going, and here I'm adding in some more cement because it wasn't thick enough. So you want to make it where it's kind of thick side and see, I take the rocks out. And then I can use the rocks all around my plants and stuff. It's just rocks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the ball up. Now this does make a heavy cement ball. This is not a hollow ball. So we can make a hollow one another time. This is just making a round ball that's going to be somewhat heavy, but it's nice and secure when you sit it down on whether you're using a bucket, however you want to set it up. Now my ball here is sitting in a large, well it's a large measuring cup. You can use any type of bowl with sand in it. So the stick goes all the way through. So when I pull the stick out later, I'll be able to slide in my tubing if I'm using a type of tubing or my straw. That's why I've got a stick in here. Otherwise you're not going to be able to drill through that much cement. Now what you want to do is pack it in real good, kind of push it, tap it. You don't want air bubbles, but let me tell you something. If the cement, when you open it up, has air bubbles, it's not going to hurt anything. The main thing is we want to make that ball and roughness to it. Imperfections are actually perfect for what we're going to do because, well, it gives a place for birds to land and grip on. If it was too slick, it'd be like using plastic and then it's a little harder for them to land on it and grip with their sharp little nails. So just pack it in real good and get as much cement as you can in there, pushed in there, and you're going to bring it all the way to the top. So just keep pushing it in. And if you have to make more, you can always make more. Now, sometimes when I'm making these balls, I will stuff in some tool, T-U-L-L-E, -L -L -E, like what I use around the garden. It's kind of like a reinforcement. There's things you can buy for certain cement projects and you can push them in there. It's kind of like having a fiber in there to give it an extra security as holding the cement together. I've done it both ways. It doesn't seem to make a difference, but I have pushed tool in there in the center, not on the outside, because it would show once we get the rubber ball off but just pack it in real good. And you could push rocks in there too, if you want. The rocks won't make a difference. I just like using it without the rocks. Well, it's just easier to work with. And then just set it aside and let it dry for at least 24 hours, check it. And it doesn't have to be 
it's solid, but you want it firm. Now, this is the first ball I did before I taped it. It's the same method. You cut it open at this point. You can use a razor blade or you could take the tape off, the duct tape. Like I said, I've used this multiple times and just cut it. And then you'll see a beautiful ball once you get it completely cut. The rubber ball will not stick to the cement, so it's perfect. You don't have to oil it or anything, and it just pulls apart. Is that gorgeous? And it's wonderful that the top is flat because the top is actually going to be your bottom when you sit it on a plate or a tray or however you're going to set your ball up. And there it is. Now we just have to yank that stick out and replace it with a tubing. But isn't that easy to do? And don't forget, if you're using a rubber ball, use it over and over and over. Now we can go set it up. Now there's multiple ways of setting up our ball. I like using buckets, sometimes with a heavy plate on top. This particular bucket is wonderful. It's a bait bucket. I called the company, though it doesn't have a number. It is food safe as long as you don't microwave. So it's perfect. And I got it at Walmart. I found out that this particular size isn't exclusive. I have nothing to do with Walmart but just something I found online and it works great. See, you could use a plate and this is a heavy duty plate. You would have to cut a hole in the center. Don't let your ball fall through, but a small hole. And then this way it will be well balanced. Remember the ball will roll around. So you have to have it anchored some way. The best way to anchor it is just cut a hole that's smaller than the ball. But this one's got a lid that simply pops off. And being that the ball, the one I made, is about 15 inches in circumference, about five inches in diameter, and that opening here on this lid is four and a half inches, it works perfect. So all I have to do is set the ball on top. It's not gonna fall through, and now I just have to set up my pump inside. See, perfect bucket for me. But you can build it any way you want. Keep that in mind, because you may have a different project design that you want to do instead of this way. This is simple and I'm going to show you some other features on this bucket later on that I happen to really love. Now for my project the only one that's going to work the solar fountain kit is with the panel and the long cord. Keep that in mind. We won't need all the other doodads at all with it but we do need the solar fountain kit that's got the pump that goes inside the bucket and the panel that can be put placed in the sun and that's a super long cord so you'll be able to move it in a lot of different places. And then I'm using a straw. You can, of course, go to a tropical fish store or a hardware store and buy tubing. I also have a link to tubing I do buy online underneath the video here. But the straw, if you can find these jumbo straws, they're so cheap and get a whole package for under $2. So I'm going lately with jumbo straws. Now, as long as my project is straight, and there's no curves, I can use the jumbo straws. Otherwise, I will need flexible tubing. So I'm gonna move all the parts out of the way. We don't need it. Don't throw it away. You may change your mind one day and set something else up. Okay, so this straw is gonna go perfect right on the pump. The pump's gonna go inside the bucket. Don't worry, some of you said, how can you put that in there with electricity? It's solar, but the main thing is the pump is designed to be submerged underwater. Oh, I love these kits. Now you're going to set it up by putting the straw on. Now this straw is a little loose, but I'll show you in a few minutes how we're gonna fix it. And we need to cut it. Because remember, that ball is going to drop down inside. It took me a couple tries to figure out how long it would have to be. Now, my straw in this particular ball did not go all the way through. Why? Because I used a leaf branch from my papaya. And by doing it that way, it was a little too small. But you know what? It worked out okay. You'll see. This one worked perfect. So I'm going to have to cut the straw. Now remember, if you're using straws, they're so cheap. If you make a mistake, keep the pieces. You'll use it for other projects. So I'm measuring approximately how far it's gonna be. And you can always cut more off as you start to put it together. Now, as you saw when I was testing the straw, it was a little too loose. And I've showed you in other videos and I'll show you again how wonderful this is. You take a piece of that straw you cut off, you slice it in half, and now you're gonna push your other straw on top. You're making your straw thicker at the base, just a little bit, enough to hold snugly onto your fountain pump. Isn't that cool? Now the trick is making it short enough for me to put the ball on top. The lid's gonna go on top. And now normally I would notch the bucket, but see the hole on the side on the lid there? I can put my cord through because this particular solar fountain kit unplugs. If it doesn't unplug, I would have gone ahead and made a notch. 
But since this one unplugs, I'm going to string it through the lid and I won't have to make a notch and I'll be able to just seal it. And see how the ball's going to sit? So I've got to make sure that straw is short enough. You may have to take a few times cutting it until you get it right on your project. But remember, you may not do it exactly like me. You might set it up in a five gallon bucket or a three gallon bucket. And this one is a smaller bucket, and so they're all gonna set up a little bit differently. But you got the idea. Now, that's how it's gonna go, and let's get it put outside. I so love the solar fountain kits that have the panel. There's nothing nicer than being able to move it around. Now, there it is. We're outside with the bucket. I don't have to make a hole in the lid because this particular bucket already had the hole. And now I unplug my solar panel, because this one has a plug. Most do, but a few do not. I can put it through the hole in the lid, and you can do this project on other types of solar kits you set up too, you know, if you have a hole in your lid or whatever way you're doing it. So keep that in mind. Now we've got the little blue straw already on there. Now we just have to push the ball on, and the ball has to be on the outside, remember that. And then we push this on, it's nice and snug by using that extra piece of split straw. We sit it on, tuck everything the way you want it, snap on the lid, and then we can add water. This is so fun. I love these. Plug it back together and show the panel the sun. Look at that. You can't get any easier than this. And let me tell you, that bucket is fantastic. I love these because you're going to see later on. They're perfect to set inside something or decorate. Cool. So now let's go over some of these tips and tricks I've got for you. I set it up, look at this. These Orioles are pushing away all the hummingbirds. It's real tough, but they've got balls all over the place. They're in the garden in different places. Look at that. First, the two of them chase each other off and then they came back. So as far as setting this up, I prefer this bucket right now because it's only like $3 and change. It's got a rough texture to it, but yet you can still take a little sandpaper and sand over plastic and then you can paint it. Now. I'm not painting my buckets, though I could take the time to do it. It would take hours to decorate a design. So I've got another unique way of decoupaging in a very interesting way. If you are interested in decorating something, let me know and I could do a separate video because it would take way too long. But though it looks really nice the way it is, you can decorate it. And then the other thing you can do with this bucket is you could sit it in a large planter. So you would see the ball sticking up and plants all around it. That would work really good too. The other thing on the cement is I know they're heavy, the bags. They're 60 pounds. I can't lift that either. So I'll give you a tip on that. Go to your hardware store, whether it's Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you want to go to. Tell them you want a 60 pound bag of cement and would they put it in the shopping cart for you? Yes, those silly Orioles think that my wise cam is a perch. Anyway, so now you've got it in your shopping cart. Again, you haven't touched it. You haven't lifted it go pay for it, go out to the car, and instead of lifting it to try to get it in the car, I don't know if they'd help you or not, and then you'd get home and you'd have 60 pounds to deal with, slice the bag open gently, load up all the cement you want in a bucket or something you brought with you, and then nicely put a sign on top of the cement that you already paid for saying free gift I took what I needed, the rest is yours. And let me tell you something, somebody in that parking lot will be so excited to find that bag, they will grab what you didn't take and they will take it home. So it's not wasted. I'm telling you, it will work. So that's a way you can get home the cement you need because you're gonna use very little. You're not gonna use 60 pounds. But again, you can always empty out as much as you want and then leave that note. So somebody that sees the note knows it's free. So I hope I've given you ideas, and yes, water fountains of all kinds brings in all kinds of birds. We're seeing birds here right now that I have never seen before, and we're not sure what is going on. This is even new. I mean, two years ago, I put together a large video. When I say large, it's two hours of all the 50 species of small birds we have here, and we have more. We saw one the other day. We have no idea what it is. So water brings in the birds, plants brings in birds, and of course food. So we feed the hummingbirds nectar, which is bringing in all the Orioles. This year we've got like a hundred that hang out around here. And it brings in other birds too, even your insect eaters, because as they fly by, they see all the birds. And it's like, wow, this must be a place to go. So they all come in, all these different birds, they hang out, they bathe, they drink, they feed in the garden insects, or they look for the seeds 
sheets I put out. So I hope I've given you some fun ideas on how to make fountains, because I'm telling you, the birds will appreciate it. And remember, if it's a hot day, just throw some ice, whether it's inside the bucket or in a tray, however way you are giving your birds a bird bath. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And remember, if you want to see how I decorate it, I can do a separate video on decorating buckets because I just ordered five more of those buckets because they're really cool. Bye-bye. Oh, this is just too fun. Now, one more last point. Remember, that lid, no matter whether you use this bucket with this lid, a regular bucket with a regular lid, or a plate or a dish, just make sure you have enough holes on the lid no matter what you're using for the top so it goes back into the bucket. You can always make more holes. More holes are always better than less.